Eshkol Nevo è tra gli scrittori israeliani più apprezzati, i suoi libri hanno conquistato le lettrici e i lettori di tutto il mondo, tanto anche in Italia negli ultimi anni e da più parti è considerato dalla critica come il legittimo erede di una tradizione letteraria importante, figlio in qualche modo di un'attività intellettuale che vede prima di lui i nomi di Abraham Joshua, di David Grossman e ehm, tante sono le affinità di queste scritture ma anche tante le differenze nella costruzione del pensiero narrativo nella scelta delle storie ma anche così affini eh, perché in fondo sono tutti scrittori nelle diverse tipologie inclini a raccontare la vita nella simmetria dei desideri Eshkol Nevo disegna i percorsi inaspettati che eh, le scelte, ma anche le scelte mancate di ciascuno di noi possono eh, lasciare come segno nelle umane esistenze, come del resto nel libro Tre Piani, che è stata veramente una geniale costruzione narrativa, ci eh, dimostra come eh, occasione e punto di riferimento, il luogo comune eh, come contatto. Eh, anche occasionale rispetto alla separazione delle case e delle vite di ciascuno. Per citare i titoli più recenti, ma eh, naturalmente aggiungo anche l'ultima intervista, eh, l'ultimo dei lavori uscito in Italia, in cui fa raccontare un po' eh, quello che vede eh, del mondo e anche del mondo politico al suo alter ego, che appunto si siede di fronte ad un intervistatore. Per la rivista Vanity Fair, Escol Nevo risponde ancora una volta al bisogno del lettore di farsi raccontare la vita attraverso l'espediente letterario di prendere in presto le lettere dell'alfabeto. 28 lettere per raccontare i sentimenti, ma anche per raccontare persino un po' l'Italia letteraria con un omaggio a Italo Calvino, per raccontare i nostri desideri, come dice il titolo. E allora il primo dei desideri possibili e impossibili è la felicità che è anche il titolo ehm, attorno al quale, il tema attorno al quale ruota quest'anno la tredicesima edizione di Ebraica, il Festival Internazionale di Cultura che ci ospita con questo incontro a distanza. E scolnevo, perché tanto bisogno di parlare di desideri e, e cominciamo quindi dal più difficile da raggiungere appunto, la felicità. Well, why? You know, I, I was just uh, traveling today near the, the Kinneret, which is in the Galilee, uh, the famous lake in which uh, Jesus uh, walked upon the water. And near in this lake, there's a, a graveyard uh, of, of a famous, uh, a, a grave of a famous poet in Israel named Rachel. And, and her poem says, And this is why I, I am called Nevo. Her, her point says, in every time you desire, the, in, in every expectation, in every desire, there's this sadness of Nevo. Uh, what is Nevo? Nevo is the mountain uh, that Moses stood on and looked at Canaan and, and uh, the land, the promised land he would never see. So, in a way, my family name is a destiny. I, I have to be full of desideri. Uh, it's, 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 it has been, I'm destined to, to be this kind of uh, longing and desiring uh, person. Well, you know, I, because uh, you told me uh, 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 that we're going to talk, talk about ha happiness. Yes. I have this uh, in, my, in my computer, there's this file called Pictures of Happiness which is a short, short, like an album of, uh, of short text of happiness. And uh, times when I, when I was happy, uh, moments of happiness, and I looked at it, there, uh, uh, something between 10 or 15 pictures like this uh, of happiness. And I tried to, to see what, what is the, what can I get out of it? What, what are the, my moments of happiness? Uh, so the, there's things connected to uh, uh, to my daughters. I have uh, three filia, filia, right? Yeah. Uh, so many pictures of happiness are connected to to each one of them. 
uh, each, each one of them is, is, has a very different character and causes different kinds, a different kind of happiness. And then there's uh, love and uh, connection, intimacy with, uh, with uh, um, a romantic intimacy and, and, and uh, with friends, with Amici. And there's also music. There are uh, a very kind of like a couple of, of uh, music scenes, whether it's listening to music or, or a rock concert. And there's the body, like the joy of, of the body, of, uh, uh, of finding happiness with the body, se body uh, um, uh, senses, uh, the, the, the things that you can sense with your body. So this, this was uh, my short uh, research on uh, pictures of happiness. Anche, come stavo dicendo, in questo libro dal quale prendiamo spunto, che è appunto il vocabolario dei desideri con la raccolta degli scritti per la rivista italiana, ci sono immagini, che, eh, tabelle, eh, opere d'arte che accompagnano. Eccolo, la versione Eccolo. italiana. <ride> Eccolo. Che accompagnano le parole. Eh, le chiedo, in questo momento così difficile per il mondo, nell'emergenza sanitaria che stiamo vivendo, quanto è cambiato, eh, quanto è cambiata la nostra percezione di felicità? Well, uh, first I'm, I'm happy to talk about this, uh, this book, this, uh, I'm happy to say Ecolo, because uh, it's, it's the first time that a book of mine is published um, first outside of Israel, first in Italy. It will be published, I, I, I guess, uh, in Israel also, and maybe other countries, but this is the first language. And uh, it's kind of, I have to admit, it's kind of strange that to be so far away from my book. Uh, so I, I'm happy you mentioned it, and I'm uh, really waiting for the opportunity to meet uh, my Italian readers uh, face to face. Uh, I, I hope to do it. Uh, in September and October, the minute there's a, a legitimate flight uh, from Israel to, to Italy, I, I will be on it. I will be the first one coming because uh, I miss my, I miss uh, Ita the Italian language and my Italian friends, and also the opportunity to, to look in the eyes of people that are talking with me on my books. Uh, anyway, you asked about um, in what way this time, um, has changed our perception of happiness, right? Um, well, I, I can, you know, I can speak for myself um, and, and say that this past uh, month, month has caused me, um, I would say not, not there's, there are many people around me that found themselves during the lockdown satisfied with this kind of, uh, uh, low-key life, uh, solitude, um, not traveling, not uh, meeting people. Many people around me found it uh, full of uh, inspiration or, or like a meditation. I, but personally, I, I find it tough. I find it hard for me. It was uh, just um, like a way to remember or... Uh, uh, way to 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 re, to find it. Uh, what you what you sometimes you can forget it, uh, and 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 then this these past three months have just reminded me how much my happiness relies on my friends, on intimacy, on hugging, on on all this human uh, touch, uh, which which is lacking, which was lacking. And I, I can't wait that it will end. It's really, for me, it's very tough. I've been writing a lot, so I, I, I've been lucky to, to have writing on my side and storytelling and my imagination. And it, it was very good to me uh, having the opportunity to be a storyteller at these, these uh, trouble sometimes. But... If, if, it, if it would end tomorrow, I would be very, uh, very happy. Uh, my, my happiness is, is built uh, from, from very simple stones, uh, very simple. And, and they, are, they were missing uh, the last uh, three or four months. 
le parole come eh, diciamo occasione per rifugiarsi in qualcosa di, di buono, in qualcosa di noto, le parole scritte, evidentemente come un cantuccio riservato nel quale proteggersi. Però ci sono anche le parole che si insegnano ai ragazzi, ai giovani, a coloro che vogliono fare lo stesso mestiere, che vogliono scrivere. Lei per mestiere maneggia una materia incandescente, che è appunto quella di dare voce con le parole e i sentimenti umani. Da dove si comincia quando si deve insegnare agli altri la scrittura? Uh, first of all, I must say it has been a, a fascinating uh, um, uh, period of time now, uh, teaching during the, the corona lockdown, uh, seeing people at the Zoom square, seeing how they begin their workshop, their workshops, very sad, maybe lonely, and then being part part of this group of writers and, and being able to write it and, 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 and receiving feedback. It was amazing to see how this effect of community, of, uh, of sharing, of being in touch with someone, it was so important. I, I think uh, maybe the most meaningful time in my life as a creative writing teacher, I teach adults. I teach people that are, are my age, are younger than me, are older than me. Our classes are start with the age of 20 and then at the same room you can you can have people at, the, at their 70s or 80s. So so it was a very special time. I felt uh, like um, it's, the, it's, the, it's the Jewish festival. So I would say I, I, I felt a little bit like like a rabbi. Like there's this community and, and it's time of distress. And this is your opportunity as, as, a, as a teacher to, to give inspiration, to give hope to people. It was a very, very strong experience. And people were very strongly attached to each other during this Zoom kind of workshops. Uh, I, was, I was surprised to see how deep their connections were only based on, on Zoom interaction. And anyway, um, what you asked what is the most important thing I teach my students. Uh, so I would say curiosity uh, and courage. C curiosity because, you know, this, I, I, don't, I don't connect to this image of uh, the lonely writer who sits in his cellar, a dark cellar, and he's never in touch with anyone, and he, he's just with his own imagination. I, I think a, a, a writer is a story hunter. A writer is, can be someone who is intertwined with life. And, and this is what I try to uh, pass on to my students. Be curious, ask for stories, go on the street, uh, go on the bus. Um, be in touch with, with music, with, with theater, with everything which is alive. And, and then, then you'll, you'll get your stories close to life. Uh, so curiosity and courage, because like, I would say courage in two ways. Courage to write about what is uh, dangerous uh, for you to touch, because it's very close to your heart and maybe it's uh, vulnerable. Uh, the courage to be vulnerable while writing. And also the courage, the political courage, to investigate things that are taboo, to write about things that no one, that, that are not popular, that maybe the government does not want you to want to write about. So uh, this is how I, I kind of uh, try to inspire, we try to inspire our students to be curious and to be courage, courageous. A proposito, volevo chiederle, c'è qualcosa che ha scritto di cui poi si è pentito? If we're talking about published texts, uh, of course I have a lot of things that I wrote that are hidden very well in my uh, computer uh, under uh, fake names and, and with a lot of disguise. But, but if we're talking about published texts, I, I would say... No, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm very critical, highly critical on my own work. And then I have edi an editor and then I have readers uh, that read the book before it is published. So I haven't regretted anything. Um, 
Maybe, maybe uh, sometimes when I read, uh, when I do readings, and I read from my own book in Hebrew or in English, uh, sometimes I feel like deleting. Like my regret would be writing too much, not, uh, not uh, uh, writing too little. Uh, so, so sometimes I feel like deleting and, and, and that I could have, I could have uh, deleted a certain sentence, even a certain paragraph. Uh, this is the kind of regrets I had, but nothing which is uh, substantial. I, I have a lot of, I have a lot of thoughts and, and ambivalence before publishing, but when the book is published, it's, it's out there. Uh, it's not mine anymore, in a way. Senta, il nostro incontro virtuale questa volta lo dobbiamo appunto a Ebraica, il Festival Internazionale di Cultura, che ogni anno ci offre l'occasione per riflettere sull'attualità con temi sempre eh, appunto attuali, ma anche sulla storia della comunità per non dimenticare. E non è un caso che anche lei, come naturalmente tutti gli scrittori di tradizione ebraica invita con le sue storie e con l'analisi profonda anche dei desideri più comuni a non dimenticare da che cosa siamo nati, chi siamo, a quale comunità apparteniamo, in che territorio ehm, operiamo e lo fa anche laddove parlare di dolore può sembrare eh, diciamo ehm, superficiale semplicemente perché lo fanno tutti e invece anche lì la sua cifra è quella di farlo andando fino in fondo, fino al cuore del dolore e mh, per questo le voglio chiedere se c'è eh, una qualche relazione naturalmente con la storia degli ebrei quando senza nascondersi dietro a un dito lei sceglie le parole più difficili nel suo manacco F come ferita, G come guerra, P come perdono, V come verità. Ho scelto queste perché secondo me sono quelle che si possono estendere molto profondamente anche alla storia che festival come questi ci vogliono ricordare. La guerra, il perdono se possibile, verità soprattutto, la verità dei fatti. È d'accordo? Well, um... The, the, the vocabulary of, uh, of Desideri uh, was, was a, a column in Vanity Fair and, uh, and the way it worked was uh, they would send me a list of words beginning uh, with the letter, uh, with A, with B, with C, and I would have the freedom of choice. I, I could choose because uh, many words start beginning with P, but I chose perdono many words that begin with J and, I, and, and with G, and I chose Gera. So I, I, I went to where my soul was attracted to. Um, and if we're talking, let's, let's take three examples. Uh, Ferita, uh, Wound, is a short story about um, a father and a daughter, and uh, she's wounded while, while shopping in the supermarket. And an Arab uh, worker uh, is, is helping her. And, um, and, and for this uh, young child, this young, uh, young girl, it's the first time she, she meets an Arab. You know, she, she understands there's something different about her, her accent, the way she's dressed. And then she asks the father, uh, why, why is she speaking like this? And then the father says, she's Arab. And then, in a way, the father thinks maybe this would be a, a, a vaccine uh, against racism. Because this the first time she meets an Arab is, is when she's helped by, by an Arab woman. And there's this kind of motherly uh, attention that this uh, uh, worker, this cashier, she gives the little child. So this is a very, it's a very hopeful moment. And this is, this is the ferita. And then Gera is, is, is about someone who, is, who's, who goes to an escape room. And while going to an escape room, he's suddenly hit by his memories, his flashbacks 
from his uh, from his military service uh, at, at the 73 war, the Yom Kippur war. Uh, and then he has this conversation with the guy operating the escape room and then they talk about the, the ability to remember and the ability to forget and, and maybe any love can be the, the, the remedy, the cure. And then um, you talked about Perdono and Perdono is maybe one of the uh, the closest text of mine, some of the texts in this book I could publish only in Italy. Uh, it's a very personal text, uh, and it's about two friends. They're not talking with each other for many, many years. Uh, there was a kind of crack between them. There was uh, someone uh, was uh, hurt, and, uh, and now after 10 years of, of detachment, of disconnection, uh, the narrator is walking in New York towards a coffee shop where he's going to meet this friend, this lost friend, and 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 he thinks about the question of forgiveness: of, of is he able to forgive? What are we able to forgive when we are twenty, and what are we able to forgive when we are forty? Uh, maybe these, these things change. The things that we, we would go to war. Uh, for uh, are not the same when we are 20 and we, when we are 40. So, um, yes, I think there's a, there's a strong, um, a strong, like a thread of, of memory in, in this book. Um, this the, the words in Italian, it's very strange because it was in Italian and the words were not in Hebrew. It, it triggered me in a very interesting way to, to, to my memories, to the, uh, the things that I regret, the things that I miss. It was kind of a very interesting journey of one, one, one whole year of writing short stories uh, inspired by Italian words and going directly to my soul, like operating me, you know, in a very interesting way. Bene. Pensiamo di averci raccontato da dove nascono le sue storie e al stesso per aver dato che non esiste senza memoria, come non esiste naturalmente la storia. Grazie. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. Spero di vedervi presto. Anche noi. Arrivederci.